It's a beautiful day in the hotel room, a beautiful day for some teaching. Would you be mine? Could you be my quilt friend? <laughs> hey everyone, it's Adam Rattler with Adam So Fun. And I am in a hotel room in Texas. I'm in Dallas and I'm getting ready to teach today and it's Thursday and I don't have a video for tomorrow. I know I wanted to make it, I just haven't had time. So I'm coming at you live from my hotel room. I'm wearing my cowboy boots because I'm in Texas, and why not? But today, we are going to be talking about um, how to put Pro Stitcher Designer onto, uh, or not Pro Stitcher Designer, Simulator onto your laptop, because I've got this question a hundred times in the last few weeks, and I've been gone, so I haven't really been able to get back to anybody because I've been teaching. So I figure, why not just go into a video? And we're also going to talk about um, combining designs. So I'm going to go in, we're going to put designer onto the, uh, my laptop, and then we're going to use, or not designer, I keep saying designer, we're going to put simulator onto my laptop. And then we'll go back in, and I'm going to show you how to combine designs. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, I do it a lot when I am... Uh, creating new straight or uh, edge to edge designs. I could go in and kind of do some editing to that. So uh, we'll talk about why you might want to combine designs, um, different ways to do it. And then um, also like, you know, sometimes for instance, I had a border and I wanted kind of a triangle look and I didn't use an edge to edge. I used a triangle block, but because I combined it, snapped everything together, it gave me this whole new block. It looked really cool. And I was able to still use it as an edge to edge, although it didn't have the prime like start and stop points and the right stuff. But I was able to kind of finagle it to work for what I was looking for and it made a brand new design. So we're gonna jump into that. I'm gonna jump over to my computer so you can see what we're doing. But um, I hope you'll be my quilt friend. We'll see you, in, we'll see you back in a second for our video. All right, everyone, here we are. I am just on my Google homepage, and I want to download Pro Stitcher to put simulator on my com computer. So I'm going to go to ProStitcher.com. Oh, my fingers got stuck. .com. Enter. Now, if you haven't been to uh, ProStitcher.com, tons of useful information on here. I mean, I tell, talk about it all the time. There's education videos. You can do your software updates but not only for Pro Stitcher, but also for Pro Stitcher Designer and Catalog. So I would definitely recommend coming and playing around in here, seeing what it has to offer. I mean, when you click on the education, it's just videos and videos and videos. Each video has a PDF tutorial, so you have a little walkthrough for it. It's just a really great resource. I'm going to go to software, because I want to grab the um, the latest version for me. So when you come to software, you'll see we have premium, premium beta, standard, and classic. So Pro Stitcher started here. And then um, they had a new version. Standard came out. This is where I started with Pro Stitcher Standard. And then uh, like three, three and a half years ago or so, premium came out. And then now we have the premium beta so people can test and make sure that things are running nice and smooth for everybody. Um, there is a button if you're on the, just the premium pad or premium tab. You have the latest version. We can click this down, and then you're going to connect or you're going to connect. You're going to download the version that is correct for you. So I want handy the handy quilter one. Um, you'll see install uh, instructions right here. If you need to put it onto a tablet, there's some known issues, things like that. So um, let's say I want this version. I'm going to click it. And you'll see that down on my bottom left, it's showing me that, I think you can see this, but it is showing me that I have um, a download coming up. I actually don't think you can see that because of how this uh, screen capture goes, but it's saying it's downloading this update. Now, an important thing to know is that this is a zipped file. So um, you're either gonna have to unzip it or most computers nowadays just unzip them for you so you can have access to those files but you do need to know where that file is downloading to because you're going to have to open it we're going to have to go in and pick it up and um and open it it's very easy to do this it's just most people if they're having issues with this they don't know how to open that file or they don't know where it re uh, downloaded to same thing if you are going to um 
by designs know where they're downloaded to. And um, usually I will download them. They usually download into your download folder, and then I will copy and paste them into my design folders and such. But um, we have about 10 seconds left for this download. And four, three, two, one. Ta-da! Um, oh, it's scanning for viruses, so I guess a few more. But um, you see that the Pro Stitcher works on Baby Locks, Handy Quilters, Genomi, and the King Quilter, so you can pick any of those and um, use it. It's still scanning for viruses. Uh, what else is on here? Like I said, there's some release notes. There's some known issues and workarounds. You can see previous versions, and you can jump back and forth from versions. So if you are someone who's like, oh, I really want to use the update or use the beta, and you use the beta and you don't like it, you can roll back and use these install instructions for the 506 version. And when you do that, it will put 506 back on and you won't have the, ver the beta anymore. And you can kind of go back and forth if you want to. Um, it shows that my file is ready. So I'm going to open that. All right, so now we are in my files. Um, you'll see that there's a pre-install in the update file. Now this is where things get tricky. And I just went and opened it. This, um, if I look up at my bar up here, it's telling me that this is a zipped file and it's saved in this PC, my downloads folder, and then the Pro Stitcher update folder. And this is what's in it. Um, we just want this update file and I can simply select it and double click it. All right, so I got a pop-up when I double clicked it and it's saying, do you want to take these out of this compressed folder? And I want to extract all. All right, and then now I get this pop-up and this is saying, where do you want to put these files? And I am putting them into my downloads folder right now. That's fine for me. And you could see the six at the end. Yours wouldn't have this. This is because this is a sixth time I've downloaded this file because I will download them and put them in places and then not remember. Usually they go on a thumb drive, all this, all this fun stuff. But, um, so let's see, da, da, da. I'm going to put it into my downloads file. If I wanted to put it somewhere else, I could select browse and pick where I want to put it, but this is fine. I'm going to hit extract and then it's going to show me that it's downloading. Um, you're not going to see this screen because I don't have a little window for you to see it, but it's just saying I'm copying two items and now we're almost 100% complete. It, it's really quick depending on how old your computer is. So now we, it's, this pop-up's coming up and these are the actual files. Um, before they were compressed and now we can see PSU over here. And again, I want the update file, so I'm gonna select the update file, double click. You'll see the little spinny wheel. I'm getting a pop-up saying, are you sure you want to open this? And I do. So I'm, um, I'm saying run anyway because I know this publisher and it's going to be okay. So I'm saying, yes, I want to run it. And now you're not going to be able to see this because it kind of shuts my computer off to make sure that we can do this. But a pop-up says, do you want to allow this app from an unknown, ch unknown publisher to make changes for your device? And anytime you open this Pro Stitcher program, it's going to do this, and we're just going to say yes, because we know that it's from Handy Quilter and everything's okay. All right, so this pop-up window comes up, and it's saying, welcome to Pro Stitcher Premium Updater. You're going to tell yourself, what do you mean, updater? I have this already. What? Why are you updating? Or I don't have this. What do you mean, updating? It's using that update folder, so it's always going to say that it's the updater. So this is showing me that I already have one installed. I have version 20.09521, and I want to roll back to version 506. So I'm going to hit start. Then I'm going to say confirm. It's running, uh, it's doing the pre-install. So you might have to run that pre-install. Um, it will tell you if you do or not. Installation is complete, and I can hit close. And then it's going to launch the Pro Stitcher program and boot up. All right, so here we are in our newly installed Pro Stitcher simulator. Remember, when we're in simulator, we get this extra button that is simulate. And if I click that, it turns green, and now I can move my crosshairs. This is the only way to move your crosshairs when you're in simulator, because we do not have a machine to actually grab and move it, because the crosshairs are what? They're our needle. So let's open a design. File open. Um, so this is 
Chevron 3, I've, like I said, I was doing a design and I wanted to do an edge to edge design with this. Um, this is not an edge to edge design, but I wanted to see what it would look like. So I could just go and hit repeat and point to point. And this is so this is the design I ended up using because I thought this was really uh, a really cool design um, to go across the across my quilt. But I didn't realize I could do that when I did this. So it was I was uh, I'm going to undo this repeat because this is back when I first got my machine. And when I first got my machine, I'm like, well, I can't repeat anything unless it's edge to edge. It's not going to work. So I actually came in and I have my one design. I can go into my edit tab. We have undo, redo, you know, copy, paste. I always just use duplicate. It's basically a copy paste, but does both of them at once. And I wanted to combine these two designs into one. So I, so I can select my first design. I'm going to move my crosshairs just to the center. And the easiest way to combine two designs I can go to my Modify tab, and remember in Pro Stitcher it's always Tabs, Ribbon, Sidebar, and I can, so, uh, let's see, I want to reposition, and if I look at my sidebar, I want to reposition the first design by the end point. And you'll see the end point moves to my crosshairs because when we're using reposition, it's going to move the design according to where my crosshairs are. So it's very important if you're doing this on your machine and not in simulator, which is very, it's very easy to do, you do not move your machine at this point. Because now I'm going to tap on design number two. And this is going to be whatever I want to stitch second. And I'm going to use reposition come over to my sidebar and I'm going to hit start point and you'll see that it moved the start point to my needle so now I have the end point of my first design on my crosshairs or my needle I have the start point of my second design on my crosshairs or at my needle so now if I I, I always deselect them both and then I can drag and drop a box I'm going to move my simulated line out of the way and we can see I get the little black box which means it's going to stitch design one and go right into design two. So maybe I didn't need a border design, maybe I just needed two of these. And this is the important part, we have to baseline this. So I'm going to baseline, the black dot disappeared and now these two are one unit. So if I went to rotate and hit rotate, they rotate as one. And this is when I would go up to File, Save, Selected, and Save this design. So that's one time you might want to combine two things. We'll just leave that here. Um, let's go and check some edge-to-edge -edge things. Uh, I want continuous line. We want the chest set. Open. Maybe the chest set and some flower pots. Why you would combine these, I don't know. Because you are the master of your designs and you get a pick. And I'm just looking for something kind of linear. What about the moose and pine? So when you're combining designs, um, one thing we want to check for is we want to kind of make sure this is on the same plane. Like all of our starts and stops are on the same plane because we do want it to go straight. And I can lay them out and then pull my simulator bar here and see if things might work work well. And we're going to find out. I'm going to combine these anyway because it's not like we have to have them on the same plane, but it will work better. Um, if you want to edge or if you want to point by point or point to point them, they do have to be on the same plane or it won't work. So we're going to find out. I'm going to connect these together and then we'll see if we can edge to edge them. I'm going to connect these together and then we'll see if we can edge to edge them. So what do we want to go first? Maybe we're going to do the chest set and then the moose because it'll look like the moose is going to eat the flowers. I don't know. And why are these flowers the same size as that moose? That is a small moose or those are some Jack and the Beanstalk flowers. But that's beside the point. So we're going to select our first design and we have our chest set. 
I will modify tab. And because this is the first design, where it's going to stitch, just think of it, the first design is stitching to the left of the needle, so we need the end point at our crosshair. So reposition, end point. I'll select design two. And in this case, the second design is going to be on the right side of our crosshairs. So I want to reposition it by the start point. There we are. Let me simulate. Or I'm not so I'm moving the simulate, moving my crosshairs out of the way. And I always do these two. I add one piece at a time. So now I can select these both. We get the fabulous black dot. So I can baseline it. So now I have these two pieces. These two pieces are now one piece. I baselined them together. And now I want to add another piece. So in this case, I'll move my crosshairs back to the middle. I'm going to need to click design one. This design is coming first. So it's going to stitch to the left of my crosshair. So I'm going to hit endpoint. Select my next design. It is going to stitch to the right of my crosshairs, so I can hit start point. And then I will move my simulate out of the way. Oops. Select my two designs. And what do we see here? I'm glad I did this because this is very important. We see there's a start point and a stop point right here in the center. And what that is indicating, it wants to start at this point, stitch our flowers, end here and jump all the way back to the beginning and stitch back. So our stitch path is not how we want it. We don't want it to stitch here and then jump back over. That would be terrible. So over on our sidebar, we have the tab that says workspace. So I'm going to select the workspace tab. And we can see in our, I call this my Pro Stitcher universe, my workspace. Um, in my Pro Stitcher universe or my workspace, I have a merged group eight. I have flower pots, continuous line. So the we're going to call these the mountains in the background are the merged group. I have the flower pots, continuous line. I have the merged group 13, which I'm going to call the um, chess set and the moose. And then um, we have our group, which is the flower pots and the moose. So under group 15, that's currently selected. We know it's selected because it's green. I can click on the flower pots and it shows it's going to stitch the flower pots and then it's going to stitch the merge group. But we want it to stitch the moose and the chest set, which is the merge group first, and then the flower pots. I can select the merge group and see that that's what it's actually selecting. And in this case, we want this to stitch first. So I'm going to come down and do you see these arrows down here on the bottom right on our sidebar? If I push up, it's going to move it up in this stitch order and watch what it does to the start and stop here in the center. Boom, we get that beautiful black dot. I'm going to refresh this. The start point is now at the far left. End point is at the far right. Very important, we will baseline, the black dot will disappear, and now these, you'll see merge group 15. And now we have our new design. So if we wanted to edge to edge this, let's find out if that actually works. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Repeat, add some repeats, and can we point to point it? Yes. So that actually worked. So now I could have this goofy design stitching across. I'm going to have to do it, find a quill just to do this. Now look, this is um, another good thing. I'm glad I picked this out. See this flower pot and how this flower stitches on top of our chest piece? Now if we look at the flower design, it comes all the way out here. So we get this nice kind of section between the designs because that design is meant to stitch with itself. So it ends here, but I have this little hangover, and this curly cue is lower than the one over here, so it would stitch down here. So those are made to work together and combine together. When I tried to combine it with this uh, chest set, it's too close. So we're gonna have some overstitching. So not all designs work well together. Um, it would have worked fine here because we have openings. So if I took the chest set out and was just like mousse flower, it would have worked. But it's always something to check 
if you're going to merge things, go back, look what it look what it looks like um, as the whole, and see if that's something you want. Because if I didn't repeat this, I would have never seen this overstitching. So that's how you merge things. It's very easy. Most people don't know how to do it and have never seen it. Um, but it's just simply as long as you place the end of one design on the start of the next design and make sure you arrange the stitch out in the correct order, you just hit that baseline and then you have that merge group. Don't forget to save it. And um, yeah, I hope you learned something. I'll see you back here in a second. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I hope you learned how to combine those designs. And for those of you who don't even have Simulator on your computer yet, now you realize how easy it is. We're just going to download that file and double click it, open it, let it install. Um, it has been a long day of teaching for me. I have two more to go before I get to go home, but I wanted to make sure that I got this video done tonight so I can hopefully get it edited and uploaded in the morning. We'll see. Fingers crossed. I might be doing a little bit of behind the scenes editing while I'm teaching tomorrow before we get started. But um, as always, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon so you're notified of those new videos when they come up. Um, follow me on social media, Adam So Fun, and that's S E W um, everywhere. All the social medias, Adam So Fun, and um, keep your eye open for some new videos coming up next next week. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing, but I'm sure it'll be fun because I'm Adam So Fun. Uh, I'm signing out. We'll see you next time, and it won't be from a hotel room. But thanks for joining me. Bye, guys.